Tank Davis stops Frank Martin. If he could knock him out with one punch, why didn't he do it in the first round? Well, we're going to be taking a look at the adjustments, the patterns of movement, and all kinds of things that are going on in the fight. We're going to be talking about why, some of the strategies, some of the things that went right and wrong for each fighter, um, and how we got to that point uh, through all of their adjustments. So the first thing that Frank Martin's going to start by doing is getting a little leash on Tank Davis. He's going to be controlling him. When he puts his hand out there, he's going to be sticking his lead hand out there, and that's as close as Tank is allowed to get in that moment. He absolutely has to interact. He has to do something. He has to catch it. He has to slip it. He has to counter it. He has to do something. And this is one of the ways that he can make sure that he knows where Tank Davis is at all times by uh, putting a leash on him. That's a Feltz boxing term. You're going to learn more about that stuff when we talk about a little bit about the Feltz boxing uh, community or the Feltz boxing school, the Feltz boxing academy. Um, if you guys are looking for a community of places to train and learn boxing. Okay, now... As uh, he gets to the front foot here, he's going to be controlling him again, giving him a little bit of those leashes. And it's really important that you pay attention to the fact that he's doing this at a point where most of his space behind him is kind of taken up. And there's going to be a, an opportunity for Tank Davis to kind of cut the ring off. And it allows him to get a kind of, kind of a free punch. So after giving him a couple of leashes, okay, he sees that Tank Davis is not going to look to fight the leash. He's not going to look to counter it. He's not going to look to... so. Frank Martin looks to follow up and throws a rear hand right there and then get right back to his circling and stepping around uh, Tank Davis. Now, one thing I want to point out right, real quick, he's circling to the outside of Tank Davis, right? Normally, people circle to the inside, and then I'll force both fighters to circle to the inside, right? The inside of their opponent, okay? He's trying to circle to the outside. It's very, very, very important, okay? <clears throat> but circling to the outside, no. No. Shooting this jab to the body, this is one of the first places that Tank Davis is going to be able to find uh, any type of offense or be able to get on the line with Frank Martin. It's going to be one of the first places, but he immediately gets countered here. And because of that, it's going to mean that he's going to look to use this type of offense a little bit less. He's not going to look to engage here because Frank Martin's already devised a way to snap and counter this position. So Tank Davis has to be really, really, really quick after throwing this uh, jab to the body if he wants to use this. So he's probably going to abandon it. All right. So moving on to the next clip here. Okay. Now we got Tank Davis coming forward in a high guard. Stepping jab here. Coming forward. Now take a look for, at the little tiny pendulum steps that he does. Uh, Tank Davis does a lot of these little tiny ones. And they're not always the sharpest. They're not always the fastest. Um, little controlling jab here. Now again, getting his leash on him. Right? We saw Tank Davis trying to get a little bit of a leash on, uh, on Frank. But Frank's taking a step off. So again, look at him. Giving him a little bit of lead hand control. Okay, put the leash on him, and then he's going to walk him, okay? Take a step off the line, move off the line, and then this forces Tank Davis again to have to move forward, right? Penduluming forward. Now, he's the smaller fighter, right? So if Tank Davis uh, is going to be closing the same amount of distance that Frank Martin is, sometimes he's going to have to be pendulum stepping because he's a little bit bigger, okay? Now, moving around, and again, this is most of the fight. Okay, the beginning of the fight is just Frank Martin controlling space with the lead hand, putting the leash on Tank Davis, and then Tank Davis looking to give him a little bit of a look, looking to attack that little bit of a lead hand, and then again, just walking him a little bit, moving around the ring, eating a little bit of time on the clock. Okay, Very, very, very important because um, in the overall strategy of fighting a guy, and we're going to talk about this, it's very, very, very important when we get there. Fainting here, pushing him off of his line, boom, giving him a couple feints, and now... Tank Davis, there's an inevitability, okay, where you're going to be catching and blocking punches and doing this and doing that. And um, Tank Davis, on average, pretty slow starter. You know, it's very interesting because, you know, at the highest level, everybody's skills are all the same. Everybody does all the same stuff. That's uh, the only things that work are the only things that work. That's just what it is. Um, and the idea that it's interesting that Tank you oftentimes take so much time to warm up and to get his counters and to get his you know but anyway gets pushed off his line look at him pendulum stepping right the little hops the little side straddle hops here now as he's doing those moves frank martin looks to control him and again throw this rear hand to the body and just get that kind of free punch okay not a lot of stuff going on from tank again the leash getting control of him T uh tank not looking to fight off of it yet jab and now he does this move here look at him 
very 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 important look at tank's eyes okay he uses this jab he's gonna get to that position right down right he didn't get controlled by frank and then he's gonna blast into this jab boom and then get down here this is how he sets up his pendulum step and he sets up his ability to throw that same right hand that frank martin can kind of throw for free right because frank martin's so much bigger he has so much more range he can just kind of let it go off the one one two but because tank is so much smaller he's gonna have to use those big pendulum steps now notice off of that jab this is a sharper pendulum step not just using that little tiny one where it's real slow real you know like meandering okay and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later now again penduluming forward you can see his weight kind of rocking forward gives him a little bit of a feint and uh, i call this move it's coiling he's gonna be pulling right what he wants to do is he wants to get planted but he's coiling right now so we're gonna call it coiling he's getting his weight to the ground and he's looking to find a way to explode or rather right now see if frank martin is ready to see if he's going to explode so he gives him that little coil right there boom. and then frank martin just moves off the line he doesn't counter which tells tank okay well maybe i can probably throw that shot so we're going to see if he does gets on the line with the one again no real great reaction from frank so it's opportunity for tank davis to continue this little path of of movement this can this path of attack and follow up on that jab he's already created a little bit of space for it now your opponent can make adjustments at any time so you're never really super safe like exactly safe right again giving him another feint and i just want to point out real quick you guys excellent control of the lead hand right here and look at where frank martin's glove is now this is not how you block punches this is not how you do it but it is one of the ways that you show your opponent that you're not going to be getting hit with any dumb shit and that means that they're going to throw on average less punches because of this okay and this is really really important because again a lot of these things that tank is doing here one jumping in pulling right again he's going to be coiling getting down and again look at frank martin's guard it's very very tight guard very very tight and not a lot of a lot a lot of appealing holes not a lot of places where where javante davis or sorry uh tank uh, I think his name is Walid now. I can't remember what he changed his name is. So I just want to call him Tank. I don't know what he wants to be called, but I'm going to call him Tank. I think he kept that part. But not a lot of appealing places for Tank to explode or snap out of this position onto Frank Martin. If he doesn't get him, he's going to be exposing his line, right? Again, just having his hands up just deters it. Even though this is not how you want to block punches, he's deterring a lot of very, very, very violent and dangerous action okay now getting to the line with a little counter here frank martin's going to give him a little bit of a feint boom and gives him a little counter jab walking him around and again uh frank martin with the leash on him right dragging tank away around jab tank getting under and again look at his eyes always on his opponent look at the guard of frank again so many of these things give these little small edges of just having your hand up right when he pendulums on your line give you these opportunities to put yourself in a position where you can win rounds right where where a lot of times um, a guy like frank martin if he doesn't have his hands up he's going to be getting hit right but we saw how fast he was right if if you can stop your opponent from having so many opportunities to feel like they get free offense against you it puts himself in a position to land his own punches right now take a look at this momentum that he has going here very 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 important very interesting stuff but he's going up down up down up down boom and he's able to hide this punch here this is really 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 important because uh number one i show a bunch of two foot punching drills okay now my two foot punching theory and the way that i teach striking and punching is uh the fastest and most efficient way to to teach all of boxing okay and uh the system that i've created for what i call weaponizing the one inch punch okay it's going to teach you your how to throw your absolute best punch but it's not just going to stop there teaching you how to throw as hard as you can it's also going to teach you how to improve that punch and if you work at it and you train hard and you're diligent and i mean hard you will turn into ryan garcia 
you will turn into Tank Davis. You will have the type of snap and power and speed that these guys generate. Okay, I'm the first coach in history to be able to crack the code, and be able to teach it to absolutely anybody, male or female. This is just how your body works. This is just how this stuff works. Okay. Now, if you guys want to learn all by yourself, you can check out the Faust Boxing Combat System in the description below. Or if you guys want a community where people are learning to do all this stuff and learn how to train these drills, learn how to fight with my system, um, uh, check out the Faust Boxing Academy in the description below. It's 20 bucks to sign up. Um, there's also going to be uh, all of the film studies that I'm doing uh, pre-fight where I do the long form film studies. Um, we're also going to be watching the entire Tank Davis fight doing an entire film study talking about what tank's doing wrong what he should be doing right um we're going to be talking about what frank's doing wrong what he should be doing um and i'm going to be teaching them all with the drills the hundred over a hundred drills that are already on the phelps boxing academy to teach you how to move the most brutally efficient patterns of movement to teach you how to fight to teach you how to step around your opponent to step around to his outside, to step around to his inside, how to move and how to circle, how to navigate the ring, but also in a way that's going to teach you how to fight and put you in the best positions to land the best shots, the best counters, how to put the best leashes on your opponent. Okay. Now it's going to be an entire, it is an entire community of people all training and learning to do the same exact things. Okay. And I have People on there that have been working with me for years have been training, um, had their first amateur fights with me. And then now uh, one of my guys, uh, Alex, in his 10th amateur fight, starting to knock guys out. Incredible punching power. Um, and again, you'll be able to follow him and his progression as he moves through the, the amateur system and see his training and uh, see a lot of all of the other people training and working. OK, it's again, it's an entire community now. 20 bucks a month or uh, massive discounts if you get either a six month or one year subscriptions okay if you get a one year subscription it comes down to 13 dollars a month roughly american um and again it's also going to be containing tons and tons and tons of full fight film studies um, as well as Fouts boxing academy videos uh, where I watch the videos that you guys send in of your training of me to critique and break down. Um, and I create group classes to teach everyone who's sending stuff in how to get better at fighting, what they're supposed to be doing, what they should be working on next um, in a pseudo uh, private coaching. OK, it's going to be an entire community of all people learning the Fouts boxing combat system. Um, and again, as the pioneer of all the film study on the planet, of all the theories, all the things that you guys are seeing that people are trying to teach in both MMA and in boxing, it all comes from my channel. OK, the number one film study artist on the planet. Um, again, the first coach in history to understand how all of your body mechanics work to teach punching power. Again, check out the reviews. Check out the stuff. Um, yada, yada, yada. Felt's Boxing Academy. Yeah, it's going to change all of combat forever. Okay, so anyway, back to the film study. If I can even remember what's going on in this fight. What is going on here? Uh, uh, Two-foot punching theory, right? Using his rhythm, his down, up, down, up. And again, uh, when I first discussed this two-foot punching theory and I started showing people how this rhythm works and you're going to be moving up and down and up and down to drive the weight from the ground into your opponent, the first thing that people said is, oh, it's going to be telegraph. How are you going to be? Well, getting coiled, coil, explode, right? Getting coiled, coil, uncoil, coil, uncoil, coil. How does Tank know which one's going to be the one he's supposed to react to? He can't counter them all, but they're all there. Anyway, um, you know, some people, some people just have uh, an idea of what fighting is supposed to be. They've never actually done it, you know, and uh, some people only have an idea of what high level combat looks like. They've never actually done it. Just those people, those robots that stand there, that just going to explode out of their one, two, <laughs> and then death below the waist. That's not high level combat just because you're a high level athlete. That's not how it works. But anyway, getting on the line. And again, 
let's take a look at Tank again, penduluming right up, down, and look at him get interacted with when he pendulums. Again, very, very, very common and um, um, predictable movement. Okay, now there are all kinds of traps and things you can do off of your pendulum step like this. Um, and I just want to point out a few you know, maybe I guess seven years ago, eight years ago, when I first started teaching boxing and teaching um, the pendulum step, the first thing that everyone said was that it was worthless, that you're going to get knocked out doing that, this isn't that. And then I said, no, nope, just watch. In a few years, everyone's going to be pendulum stepping and it's going to become the most dangerous move in boxing. And if you're not doing it, you're not going to be winning fights. Adrian Broner, Subrio Matias, okay? Subaru Matias losing to Liam Paro because he doesn't have a pendulum step. Um, that fight, we're going to be watching that on uh, the Founts Boxing Academy as well. Um, we're going to be watching that one, I think, tomorrow. And then we're going to be doing Vostik the next day. Vostik and uh, Benavides. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to be doing Tank tomorrow as well. I don't think I'm going to get to it tonight. Um, but... There was a time, right, where a guy like Errol Spence, who had an okay pendulum step, right, he would just one, one, two, and he could pendulum step and get across your line and get lead for dominance because he was the taller, you know, pretty strong and athletic guy, pretty fast. He could close the distance really well. And then now he's on your line throwing what you thought was going to be a really hard shot that he had a decent amount of momentum in, even though he's not really a hard puncher. It was very effective. But now we've seen that people are getting used to this. It's become so much more common, especially at the high level. We have fighters like Errol Spence who are dominating it. Errol Spence couldn't pendulum step on it on to Terence Crawford's line. He kept getting smacked. And here Tank is using his little pendulum step here, but he's getting interacted with. He's not exactly getting smacked. But there are shots coming at him. He's getting timed. And these are positions that you cannot afford to be in if you're pendulum stepping on your opponent where your opponent's going to explode into a sequence like this. Now, Tank said that Frank did not have any power. Number one, I almost believe him. Um, Frank doesn't have that many knockouts in spite of the fact that he's a big, strong guy. For the division, He's a, they would be considered a weight bully. Um, but if he did have just a little bit of power, Tank finding himself in a position where his opponent is allowed to throw four to five punches at him and cross his line two to three times without him doing anything is an extremely bad sign for him. Now, we all know that Tank is like, you know, if you're looking to be a guy that's going to, you know, cross somebody's line with real big power shots and boom, boom, boom. Um, who is Tank going to be afraid of fighting? Well, pff, himself, right? Tank's the guy that when you know he's when he gets to do that to someone, he knocks you out, right? But um, but we can see that there's an opportunity there because of some of the slow starting from Tank, again, pendulum stepping, coming forward and deciding, okay, now again when he gets uh, interacted with off of his pendulum step, he's like, okay, I know he's coming, I'm going to throw a shot. Last time, again. Tank didn't move his head when he threw that counter jab, right? When he tried to explode out of it. Frank read him this time. And he's like, okay, he's going to, if he throws, and he moved his head, right? So he's throwing his jab and moving his head, um, and, and Tank did not move his head. Now, I do want to say that's also one of those products of body jab. Gets countered again right over the top of it. And again, he can't really afford to use that body jab here against Frank Martin. Frank Martin has been so solid at alienating him from that position or from that punch. Um, so it's not very, very effective for him. Um, however, at this point, Tank should be using that jab to the body to set stuff up, which essentially is that same thing where he just snatches onto the line with that down shot and into a right hand or a left hand. Um, Again, getting the leash on him, right? And then now he's got to move. He's got to move. Now, again, exploding out of that jab. And this is really interesting, okay? I thought this was a really, really, really interesting pattern. So starting with the leash here, one, two, three, counter. Okay, and now he's going to come forward. One, two, okay? Now, he's countering him on, or he's pulling here on the two, 
right? Last time Frank gave him three, and then he just sat there for all those things. But one of the things that uh, Tank is doing, he's actively waiting for his opponent to throw that rear hand. Right, lead hand control is a relatively new phenomenon in combat sports, or rather in boxing, um, especially because of how you know I'll say dilapidated the landscape was in the 90s and the early 2000s for boxing, and how bad all the fighters were. They were terrible. They were some of the worst uh, on average in history. Uh, but anyway, Tank doing a good job of interacting with the lead hand here, which is not a very common skill, waiting and waiting. And we see how long he waits when Frank Martin is just control and control and control. But he waits and he pulls this one and actually lands a really, really, really excellent uppercut counter, even though he kind of gets tapped by the counter from Frank Martin as well. Um, he doesn't actually disrupt his line so much with the uppercut because Frank Martin is so big. He's just such a massive dude. Now, one, one, control. Okay, now again, take a look at that pattern here. Getting on the line, pendulum, expecting a little bit of reaction. Coming forward, control, control. He's waiting, and then counters the third one, right? Again, gets him with this one, right? Now coming forward, penduluming forward. <clears throat> Again, putting that pressure on him. One, two. Here comes the third one. Boom. And then he tries to control him and meet him with the lead hand control and then pendulum on under it. So looking to start attacking uh, Frank Martin on the third layer of his control here to start whittling it down. Okay. Again, until he can get close enough that he can start landing straight left hands, he he can't really do that much damage to um, to Frank Martin. Now getting close again, leash leash. Now check out Frank's little adjustment here. He's like, okay, well he thinks I'm gonna attack him on the third one. He attacked me on the third one, so I don't want to be here for the third one when the third beat comes. So he starts peeling and getting off the line. Very very cool stuff. Very interesting. And like to be honest, what a really really high level fight. A little control there, and now. Take a look at Frank here, looking at that that rear hand from from Tank, right? Frank is looking over here because he's circling this way to the inside, right? Which means he's going to have to interact with this left hand as it comes around this way, and he's really worried about that big bad boy. That's why he's got that tight guard up there. So Tank is going to give him a little bit of a jab to the body while he keeps that hand up there. Oops, I kind of missed my little spot here. Oops, we're not here yet. Where are we at? Okay. A little peel. Okay, all right. Now, as they get back on the line here, okay, he's penduluming. And again, very obvious pendulum step there. Penduluming, and again, when he gives him the look, Frank gives him a little bit of control. Now, again, it's off of that rhythm, right? Right after a long sequence, here comes Tank, and he's like, okay, I got to start breaking the distance down between me and my opponent, getting some momentum on the line, see what he does. Get my guard up, and he gets intercepted perfectly right here, sees the rear hand coming. I don't think he's actually getting hit by this one. Um, but getting pushed off the line here. Um, and again, this timing, very, very common for Frank Martin to look to exploit those little pendulum steps from uh, Tank. Now again, leashing him, only one shot until he moved this time though, feeling a little bit less confident, penduluming. And then again, he pendulums, lands, and gets hit with a one-two right here. Again, Tank doesn't have all that many traps there, which is really interesting because it's not a very, very difficult move uh, to be looking to fight off of your own pendulum step, right? It's actually very, very common. Most people will just do that and just do a stepping jab or throw like a straight right hand or something. And again, right through the guard, landing some free shots right off the back of those pendulum steps. Um, and again, eventually, we're going to see that that's going to change. Okay, Now, getting to the line, and check this out. Pendulum, weights, pulls off, 
and he's going to pendulum here. Boom. And look at as he comes off, come uh, to the landing as Frank Martin's getting his leash on him. He knows, OK, right at the end of that leash, there's going to be a rear hand follow up. OK, so he's pendulums on him, sees the leash coming and then he peels off the line to get off the line of the rear hand again, starting to read. OK, that's when he's looking to hit me. All right. Can't let him hit me in that moment now. OK, so he's coming forward. Controlling that lead hand. And again, pendulum. Gives him a little bit of rock forward. Boop. Here's the leash. And then moves off the line before that shot can come. Stopping Frank Martin now from getting that free shot. But also, no more free points. Which is bad for Frank Martin because then he has to find other ways to get those free punches. Okay. Again, penduluming forward. Getting to the line. Getting leashed. And then rocking back just a little bit less this time. Little bit less coming forward, whoa. and then again getting checked and then rocking after, right? Again, still walking into the shot though. Okay. And now a little bit of a, an adjustment, penduluming, getting leashed, and then instead of just eating the shot that time, making a small adjustment. I don't like this adjustment. He kind of ducks below the waist, but again, still trying to figure out ways to get around that kind of shot, right? Now that time, I do want to say in that clip real quick, um, uh, he, Frank does a decent job of leashing and not getting caught off of his leashes and keeping um, keeping Tank off of him penduluming now again very interesting to see frank martin pen uh or tank pendulum and frank expecting to get attacked off that pendulum now again same thing right timing him and this is one of those things where if there's not a lot of control there's not a lot of counters there's not a lot of um, i think we're in the third round by now um, and there's not a lot of stuff coming back from tank there's going to be much more combinations or opportunities for combinations but i want you guys to look at that real quick this you know controlling him leashing him again he pendulums boom nothing tries to pendulum bringing the back foot bop 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 right you can't just let a big strong guy like this throw punches at you right penduluming forward getting leashed boom 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 now this is not technically legal right stiff arming or holding your hand on your opponent's head it's that like shakur stevenson kind of thing um you know it's a shame that tank didn't just punch frank in the head when he did it to show people why it's just actually a bad idea working through that jab now again frank martin having a very difficult time getting the jab through finding offense throwing a three two there and peeling getting off the rope, circling, control, circle, circle, right? Some good leashes here from um, Frank Martin. And now going with the rear hand, right, which gets blocked, but Tank really not expecting it in this moment, allowing him to step around. Now, in this clip, he, he controlled with a two and then threw a three and then peeled, and he threw a bunch of jabs and then peeled, and he threw a rear hand and then he's peeling. Like all these attacks here, that he opened up with can be used to leash your opponent. Just control their position a little bit. Get them to interact with you. Force them to break their momentum. And then move, right? And then peel. And then you don't get stuck in the corner. But throwing these things has a cost, right? It's not free just to throw all your fastest, hardest punches at some guy who's stalking you right so frank martin again keeps losing all that space between him and his him and tank right and what happens eventually he has to start doing this and this was one of the first signs of the fight in the third round where you're like oh man wait this is really bad for him now he's starting to wrestle right instead of punching tank in the face he starts to wrestle and grab and hold him and i just want to point out this is illegal it's never on accident. These guys are not doing this stuff on accident. They're professionals. These guys are in the gym. Okay, they had, they knew this fight was coming for months in advance, right? 
They've been doing this stuff for years. This stuff doesn't just happen on accident. Now, until they start just taking points, oh, you jumped on his head? That's blatantly illegal wrestling move. Take a point. Okay? Until they start taking points, people are just going to continue doing this. Now, it is hard to grab and spoil against Tank. Right? Now, real quick, take a look at that as he jumps on the line. Jab, pendulum, down. He gets coiled. Look at that guard from T uh, Frank. Again, he's got the, the right hand up. He's ready to block. It's not how you block. That's not how you do it. But he's not giving any free holes to Tank to let him know that he can just throw that shot. However, look at him circling out that way with that guard up there. It's very important for the lows that knockout clip, right? Now, again, when is Frank supposed to leash him? grabbing him. Again, this is blatantly illegal. Okay, All those punches that he threw, all that snapping, all those cool leashes that he had, right hand, and then he starts peeling and, you know, s you know, swimming around tank like he's a fish. Like, it's cool, but it takes a lot of energy. And then it forces you to have to do illegal things to catch back up. However, if tank is supposed to, you know, not duck below the waist and interact with this punch, even if he blocked this correctly, which he didn't, he just got smacked. Frank is not supposed to be allowed to hold or d push or shove off or duck below the waist after, right? You're not allowed to conserve your energy, right? Get a free breather by fouling. That's another foul, right? But anyway, Good rear hand right there. A lot of cost of business, though. Now, as we take a look at the leash that he's putting, again, because he keeps putting it out here, right? Boom. Right? And here it comes again. And Tank is slipping over the top of it with a right, uh, straight left hand. Again, with, with Frank using this lead hand here, boom, boom. And then putting it out to peel to get off the line, boom. Boom, peel. Tank's job is to make it a liability, right? Before he was fighting it on the third beat, this time he fought it on the control on the second beat, right? And again, trying to eliminate some of the layers and the comfort and the control of the line that Frank gets by, again, attacking that lead hand, continuing to alienate him from his ability to control space. Okay, now fainting, boom, giving him a little bit of a leash, giving him a hook, a leash, and then peeling. Again, excellent work. Again, if you guys want to learn how to do that stuff, all those drills are in the Fouts Boxing Academy. Putting the pressure on him. And again, excellent rear hand, circling off, control. And again, brilliant strategy from Martin, right? Just throw a random shot leash him with anything right because what's tank going to do when you leash him well if he wants to hit you he's probably going to coil he's probably going to pull and get his weight to the ground right so when he coils you just take a step off the line and what is he coiling at he's not in range to hit anything right now as he's following him around throwing those rear hands he's ready for the lead hand Tank just pendulums on the line. Here comes that rear hand. Pull. Counter. Beautiful shot. Beautiful, beautiful shot. And again, you can just start seeing right now, Tank is getting so much control of the lead hand. Frank is finding less and less offense. And this is one of the first times that, that I think it actually was the first time that when he tries to circle out that way, Tank finally cuts him off with the rear hand over the top. Now, he didn't land, but that's not the point, okay? It's really, really important. And again, we're going to see what he does with that a little bit later. But again, chasing him around gives him a little bit of a feint here. Tank with his hands down, very important. Gives him a feint. And look at how tiny that feint is, you guys. Boom, boom, into this two. 
gets close enough to throw up a follow-up combination. And now again, when Frank Martin threw punches at Tank Davis and punched him right in the head, did he duck below the waist and turn away and do all this weird stuff? No, he ate the shot and then kept following him. However, look at Frank Martin here, grabbing him by the butt, ducking below the waist, again, fouling. These are the op only opportunities that a smaller fighter like Tank Davis gets to fight a guy, right? He worked so hard to get on the outside, we saw him. Every time he gets in range, he's susceptible to a left hook, a jab, a straight right hand, and sometimes he eats them, right? Now, it'll be interesting to see how how the promoters handle all that stuff with the rules and all that stuff. Fainting low, no reaction, no counter, jab to the body, right? Now, again, Tank Davis was getting countered with, when he would throw his jab to the body. No counter this time, right? So he's going to give him another faint. What's going on, bro? Bop. Gives him the faint here. Throws the rear hand over the top. Again, with no reaction from Frank Martin, no counter, it tells him he's safe there to throw that shot. That's a pretty decent shot. One of the first ones that he really lands, you're like, okay, that was pretty good, right? Now, again, look at Tank. Immediately, what happened? Getting a look at his opponent. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful eyes on uh, Tank Davis. Now, the very next sequence, okay? Very, very interesting, because last time he shot down, fainted the jab to the body that he had thrown in the previous sequence, and then with the overhand shot. So he faints him here, ha, ha. Faints him here, ha. Gives him a one, right? Takes a look at... Uh, Frank's guard. Okay, he's got his guard up. Oh, faints him again. Pushes him off the line. Walking him around. He's about to pendulum. Back foot, front foot. Nope, nope, no pendulum. One, two, right? Jumps on his line with the one, two, right? Real quick, real sharp beats. Again, hits him with another one, two. Okay, so he, he hit him with the one, two. Then he checked the line a bunch of times, fainted him three times, just to see if there was any difference, right? For all of you guys that are reminded of his his uh, post-fight thing when he was talking about Leo Santa Cruz, and he's like, yeah, he threw the same thing three times in a row. How could you be that dumb? And then he knocked him out. But this is kind of an homage to the idea of why that was such valuable information to Tank Davis, right? You can see it in the way that he fights, in the way that he understands combat, in the way that he understands how people are, right? Oh, you're gonna use, you're gonna fight off of your follow-up, right? You're gonna fight off of your, your first contact, right? With a follow-up shot. So here's first contact. Here's your follow-up. And then what? Are you gonna do it again because it worked, right? And because it, when it does work for Tank, he gives him a couple of checks, and then he's like, oh, nothing. And then he gives him two in a row right here, which is interesting, right? Two in a row here. Okay. Now, getting back to the film study. Jab, under, right? Gets coiled. Uses that same move, that coil, to explode onto his line. Same timing, same stuff. Beautiful work from Tank. I just thought that little clip was really, really sick. Now, he's going to get on his line again, faint him. What are you doing? Right? And that was the one two faint, right? That's the same one where he explodes into the one, right? Boom, ba, right? And now he does it again. Nothing? Nothing? And all we see right here is, again, Frank keeping his guard up, ready, ready to interact. So he jumps on the line with the three, and Frank gets down and then comes back with the counter here. Now, again, again, even though he checked the line twice, right? He went jab, huh, faint, huh, right? And there weren't any counters. Uh, just like Tank Davis when he's walking around and he's got his hands down and he sees that jab coming and he, he can catch the jab and he can interact with it blah, blah, and still wait for the rear hand, Frank Martin's doing the same thing, right? He's waiting on the back half of his line for that rear hand or that lead hand control so that he can counter the, the second beat, right? So he does an excellent job here of doing that here. Uh, really, really, really good stuff. Very interesting, though, that he decides to do this only on the ropes, right? I wonder if that's what he's really trying to do, right? This is the shot that Frank Martin was looking for, right? Because people are trying to look for that shot. They're trying to jump on your line and blitz you. Pop, pop.
Now a little bit of active guard from tank, penduluming, moving around, circling, and then right into a little bit of active guard from Frank, crossing the line himself. I just wanted to include that, some beautiful, beautiful movement from both fighters as they kind of look for openings, you know, some really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of cool. Again, just look at tank moving, crossing the line, boom, back foot, cross here, boom, uh, Frank not letting him cross right there, uh, beautiful work. Now again, jumping on the line, one, two, right, leashing him, and now again, shoving him here, okay? He exploded on the line, and the reason that he exploded on the line, again, let's take a look at the position he is in the ring, okay, one, two. He's throwing this shot because he's trying to control space between him and Tank. He doesn't want Tank to close the distance and get onto his line and start smashing him. So he's throwing this shot to control space. Now he's going to body up with him and shove him to control space again to get out of the corner. Now, there were no counters from Tank last time, right? He jumped on the line through the 1-2 and then uh, shifted forward and then shoved them. And now instead of shifting forward and shoving him, because again, Tank is encountering in some of these sequences. He isn't really looking to alienate um, uh, Frank from every sequence, from every shot. He's not always working hard, um, which is really difficult to do, right? It gives Frank Martin small opportunities where if he was a puncher, he was a, like a hard shot, if he did have the Fouts Boxing Academy to learn from, uh, he could get enough value to maybe hurt Tank, right? Because it's not like he's not hitting him clean in some of these sequence. Now, coming forward, waiting again, and you can see him waiting off the jabs. Bop, and then you see him kind of come down. Bop, and you see him kind of come down. You can see him waiting for that rear hand. Now, again... Frank Martin doing a good job getting him with the hook here. It didn't wind up making it all the way around his guard, but very interesting that Tank uh, still saw it coming, right? Now, he three, very interesting. Look at him whip that shoulder, right, to try to shoulder roll in case that rear hand came from Frank Martin, right, the 3-2. Frank Martin has a very, very good 3-2. Um, I almost made a YouTube short about it um, pre-fight, but I was just exhausted. I had so much stuff going on before this fight. And before these fights, um, even though this was like, this was probably the best fight weekend of the year. You know, I don't know if that's actually true, but having David Benavidez and Tank Davis on the same card, insane. Super, super cool. Now, timing his leash right there. Again, less and less leashes from Frank Martin, allowing Tank to get close enough to attack him. Right, really, really, really good shot from from Tank, and then again, penduluming and getting coiled, getting under that line, pushing him off the line here, and now look at him try to attack him when he tries to get right back onto his line. Pushing him off again, feinting him here, boom, and then when he tries to reestablish his presence on the line, Tank Davis is already ready to throw this shot just in case there's a leash that comes because that's the most common type of movement from uh, from Frank Martin. All right, so some beautiful boxing from Tank there. All right, we're almost through. We're almost through, guys. So again, penduluming, and look at all these punches. Again, this is one of the only places that Frank Martin could really find any offense or opportunities to throw stuff. Again, good left hook leash there, controlling him. And again, Tank starting to move his head off that lead hand control, off the leash, starting to move his head, starting to come forward. Rear hand leash, and again, rolling under. What happens this time? Starts following him up. I think he kind of touches him with this body shot. But again, it's a lot of energy from Frank Martin to do that kind of movement, to do those kinds of things that he's doing. Now, Tank gets on the line, sees the leash coming, pulls, counters over the top. Beautiful. Comes in with a right hook as well. But look at him throw this shot here too. He's going to pull here a little bit. Boom, excellent shot. And again, being held. It's not legal. Tank is not allowed to hold on his way in, so he doesn't get hit. So why is Frank Martin allowed to hold when he's trying to get out? Right? 
Okay, I know. That sounds like so stupid. You can't hold on your way in. <laughs> okay, anyway. Coming in with the uppercut to get back on the line. And now at this point, you know, holding, ducking below the waist. Now he's grabbing Tank's leg and trying to trip him. You should be taking a point. 100%. This is nearly DQ range. If you ever lift and trip your opponent like that, DQ immediately. DQ immediately. You don't even need to take points. No. <clears throat> Timing him here. Front foot. As he's moving toward the back foot, feints him down, tries to get him to explode to the back foot. Now, notice pull counter from Frank Martin. But because he doesn't really have his hands up, he's just not fast enough to deal with the shot and interact with it. Boom, he gets the first feint. Now Tank is already close enough to snap on him and land this shot. You know, really, really, really good shot from Tank. Jab, pendulum. Fainting. Okay, now that move. Boom, boom. Checking the line. And now he's going to give him that little feint here. Down. Boom. Now, last time he did that down, he threw a rear hand. This time he's kind of doing that down right there and coiling. And before he can uncoil, Frank Martin's throwing this rear hand. And again, just going to show you that if you're Tank Davis, it's so smart of him not to do the same move over and over and over again. Not to just, you know. And again, it paying off this r one rule that he has for himself. Oh, you know, how dumb can you be to do the same move so many times in a row? Parrying and controlling those jabs, doing an excellent job. Easy to see them coming when you have your lead hand open. Your opponent's not going to snap into them. And then again, easy to see that rear hand coming. And here he is deflecting it here. Again, getting his head off the line with that little shoulder roll, um, little Philly shell type stuff. Controlling the jab, seeing it coming easy, waiting, waiting, waiting. Rear hand finally comes, gets back on the line with the, his own body shot counter. Beautiful, beautiful shot from Tank. Boom, shoulder roll, pull counter here. Beautiful work. Again, controlling that leash. This leash is not that effective for him, right? Boom, here comes the second leash, and again... Frank Martin has been using this punch here to control space so that he can circle and move around. It's the same shot. Tank finally finding an opportunity to kind of take it away from him. And again, all those kind of things have a dramatic impact on the overall outcome of the fight. Now, beautiful work here. Again, timing that lead hand control uh, leash from Frank Martin. He's been so active with it. He made it kind of really obvious he's going to kind of put it out there. And gets pendulumed on into a one-two from Tank. Again, beautiful, beautiful boxing. I thought that that sequence really there was really cool. Now again, where's the other attacks from Frank Martin? Remember, there was a time where he would touch right here, and then he would fire, and then he would touch, touch, and then fire, and he would touch, and he would peel, and then he would throw a rear hand, or he would throw a hook, or he would, he would, he would, he would, and now he's just letting Tank walk up onto his line and throw this hook. Now, again, I just want to ask you guys a question real quick. Um, just if, if it's your first day training and fighting, if it's just your first day, and some guy walks up to your line and throws a hook, would you be able to execute this defense? Okay, just stand up in your chair right now and just go three, two, one, and then just... Do this defense as fast as you can and just say, okay, if I timed it correctly and, I, and a guy threw his biggest punch at me and I knew that he wasn't throwing it at my dick so I could put my head in that space, would I be fast enough? And just see, would you be fast enough? Could I cheat fast enough? Okay, so that's what that is. Again, holding. Again, spoiling the fight. Not legal. Right, boom, got him again. Gave him a little bit of a shove that time. Again, control shoot. A lot of really good fights off of his leash right here. Now, tank jabbing, 
and leaving his head here, right, as he pendulums forward, gets controlled. Very, very, very important. But Tank very feeling very confident. A lot of pendulums coming forward, control, control, and then another leash from uh, Frank. And again, not getting the reaction exactly that he wanted. I'm pretty sure he probably thought that the left was going to be coming from Frank right there, and he might be able to interact with it um, instead of just continuing to pull against the jabs. Jab, and again, p didn't move his head this time and gets countered here, uh, just like at the beginning of the sequence, right, where he throws that jab and his head kind of stays in a position. Even though he was uh, penduluming a little bit, he kind of made Frank Martin believe that he'd be able to follow that shot up or that, that counter from, uh, from Tank, and he did. Really good shot. Now, Tank trying to come back, and I think that is really interesting that he was ready to pull there. Now, very, very cool sequence here. Jumps on the line with the one, throws the two. Now, controls on the way out with that right cross thing, uppercut thing. Now, after throwing that shot, bop, bop. Right, he's moving around, and now he's going to pendulum onto his line. And when he pendulums here, he crosses his line with the head here, boom. And that makes Frank Martin throw a shot at him. Right, making him think that he was going to faint right there and cross his line. I just want you guys to see that real time. Boom. And again, Frank Martin is going to explode here. And Tank barely gets his head out of the way and comes back with these shots. Barely. Um, yeah, let's just watch that again one time. Just beautiful. And then follows him around. Bop, bop, bop. Fainted him. And again... Just the smallest of margins there. Now, getting him in the corner, jumping on the line with the one, two, kind of ducking a little bit. Okay. Feeling more confident throwing these shots. Now, again, throwing that two. He kind of threw this one not exactly like an uppercut. I'm talking about the uh, the first shot. But again, before he was going one twos, one twos, and now this time he's gonna kind of be going the not exactly the opposite, but going two three. And again, this one looks like an uppercut here, right? Into a three here. Um, and again, Frank Martin always controlling and peeling the same way with the same hole, the same things exposed. And Tank is kind of starting to find more and more holes. Again, faints him. Very, very tight guard in some places from Frank as he continues to circle to the inside of Tank Davis pushing him off the line, and now again, shooting that same one, two right there. Bop, bop, okay? Now again, just like the last sequence where we showed him through the one, two, he doesn't really defend the position super well, right? He's a little bit off balance. He's a little bit, and this allows Frank Martin to follow up and catch him with the shot. Um, again, some of the times, Tank's defense not always the greatest, but now, hands down, sees the jab coming, huh, and he knows a rear hand may come after. He's ready to pull. Beautiful boxing. And again, ready off of his pendulum steps. That idea becoming more common, jumping into the the one, two, right? One, two, like motion, bop, bop. Jab to the body. And now again, remember how active... Frank was at countering the jab to the body. Again, you can just kind of tell that he's getting tired. He's starting to fall apart. And uh, we're just getting to the uh, sixth round. Boom. Now, instead of controlling space and leashing with the lead hand, instead of throwing a hook, throwing a rear hand here, right? And then shoving him. Okay. And again, no hands from uh, Tank. His hands are down. He wants Frank to be throwing punches at him. Pulls, counters. Beautiful shot, man. Beautiful, beautiful shot. And again, he's not worried about the lead hand from him. He's waiting for the rear hand. Beautiful counter. And this is the last one. No. All right. That was the last clip, guys. Um, yeah. After that. Tank is basically close enough 
um, in all of his sequences that he's found a way to counter the jabs from Frank. Now he's countered the rear hands. How does Frank have to control space if he can't throw a rear hand at Tank and he can't throw a lead hand at Tank? What's he supposed to do? For the answer to that, guys, check out the Fouts Boxing Academy. It's 20 bucks to sign up. 20, it's 20 bucks a month. Uh, six months is, I think it was 100 bucks, um, which would be, you know, basically, you know, a discount. And then uh, 160 for, uh, for a year, which is a huge discount, massive discount, comes down to like 13 bucks a month. Again, all the post fight film studies, the full entire Tank Davis film study, uh, full fight watch through will be on uh, the Fouts Boxing Academy as well as Patreon. Um, and then, uh, as well as the Vostick versus Benavidez and the Subriel Matias. Uh, film studies, those full fight film studies will all be on um, the Fouts Boxing Academy. Um, yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks, guys.